pretty large, you have to have a big cart. So, you know, looking at your, your forms and your checkout um, is a really important place to focus. And it's something that gets, tends to get kind of neglected. I mean, most, going back to Uber cart specifically, you know, that's the first thing that I look at when I'm trying to find out if the site is Uber cart or not. I head over to that cart page. <laughs> See if that looks the same. I always mean, need to look at the source code. But you know, a lot of the time, the, the checkout page, the checkout forms are really the same kind of thing. Um, and you know, certainly, there's a lot of uh, little easy changes you can you can make, like not asking for fields you don't actually need, streamlining that, having a nice sort of layout. Um, so we were working on a mock-up for a new site, and you know, it saw this sort of sexy form page, look great, but you're like, you know, the fields don't really pop out. It doesn't kind of look like a form page. That's not, that's not a good thing. So looking at it with that critical eye, you know, making something that looks good, but something that's also really obvious. You know, one little trick that, you know, we tend to do is bump the font size up on, on the, the sort of the cart page a little bit, um, or the checkout form. The last thing you want anyone to be doing is sort of squinting by the time you get to that point, and sort of not, you want those fields to be easily scannable. So there's a lot of little changes that you can make there that can make that last stage um, your product detail pages are also really critical because again, a lot of people are not looking at your home page. They're maybe probably looking at your catalog page. They may have searched and you know come into a detail page, but they're searching for like a blue widget, and you've got a you know blue widget page. They're probably you know if they're doing that search, they're probably coming in right to that page. So that brings me. Oh, I'll come back. There. Okay. So some questions to ask yourself when you're looking at this kind of in the, in the realm of sort of general e-commerce setting workflow thinking about Uber Cart um, and what you, how you might want to have it set up is, you know, what are people doing? Are you selling an, an, an event registration that you're only going to be buying one of? You know, then that really kind of changes the, uh, you know, the, the, the flow of the website. Do people come back and reorder products? They buy multiple things, you know, from you at a time they're coming back later when they run out. Um, are people tend to, you know, going to be coming back to your site for more information? Is it the kind of thing that they're going to have to you know, learn how to use, and maybe they're not sure about something after the fact, or is it, you know, are you selling, you know, toothpaste, and they're going to, you know, buy it, and they're not going to come back on the construction, and they're going to come back. Um, and, you know, kind of into that, are they, are they something that's easy to understand, are they a commodity, are they something that people are used to buying, or do they need more explanation, do they need more information about them? Um, and, of course, how are your products organized? Selling one thing, you sell like 10 things, are they 10 totally different things, are they under subcategories? These are the kind of questions that, you know, either as a developer you want to be asking, you know, client, uh, you know, how, how is it not just, oh yeah, I'm building an e-commerce site, you know, Sam, um, or, you know, or as a, as a site builder, you certainly want to think about as you're, just, even before you're, even before you're choosing a platform, you know, certainly as you start to configure your site. So, you know, getting into some, some tips for streamlining this. Um, these are just optional, I think, because that's definitely not right for all sites, but like the example of, you know, are people going to buy more than one of your thing at once? You know, well, if really, if they're not, if they're not ever, do you really need to see that slash card page? You know, why don't you just send them right here, right to the checkout, right to the registration? These are all settings, um, pretty much in Uber card for Google itself. Um, one of the, the nagging things that, that, that bothers me, I, I don't know, if we have actually implemented this on our own site, but um, is it the order review screen? Um, I don't know, I don't know. To me, maybe it's a personal thing, but I just think that's very rarely necessary. If you're kind of having a page at the end that, people are, are buying from. I like this quote because of the quote at the bottom when I put it for why do we have cancel buttons on checkout forms? Like whoever goes and fills out this whole form and then like, oh it's a cancel button, you know. Um, removing that necessary field, you know, we gotta make sure obviously you're not asking for shipping info, you're not shipping something, um, you know, any kind of address or phone or any, any other kind of information that you don't really need. Um, you know, don't be asking for it because you don't want people to see this big dog anymore. Uh Uber has got a lot of, you know, a lot of good features of that one page checkout. It's got the, you know, create an account right there. I mean, certainly it's frustrating, you know, when I go to an e-commerce site and I can't even, you know, see the shipping chart without signing up for an account or something. I mean, it's amazing how many sites do actually still do that. Um, I, I, there was a recent, a recent study, uh, I think something like, you know, 10, 15% of sites, you know, still do that. They, 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 they tested, you know, 500 sites or something. Still a substantial percentage were not. You can't see anything. Um, so removing unnecessary fields, removing unnecessary blocks. Um, one of the first things I do is turn off, you know, the cart block and all the blocks. So you've got all that kind of stuff for different, you know, cross sales and health and stuff like that. You just, you just want to focus on them. You're just typing in information that does not look really distracting, shiny things over here. I mean, that's great when you're looking at a product and you want to, you know, sell them the memory cards along with the camera. But, you know, once they've actually got to that checkout page, you really don't want to be sort of putting belt on the side. Um, product images. So this is a really, really important consideration. And I put up a couple here, just as an example. Um, you know, especially 
you know, I would say, uh, you know, you can just sort of like a stock card of, of like an article, like, like paper, like pages or something, or a, you know, a booklet of some kind. Um, it's just, it's a way of processing information better. And, and something I'll get to in a little bit is having types of information, the different types of sort of graph. People are visual, people are textual, people are, even if it seems kind of silly, maybe to you, why would I have a picture of an article kind of thing? Um, but, you know, it's a very easy thing to do that 2% of your people might say, oh, that's the article I get. I don't know what's right for you, but you know, just searching around stock image sites to see what you have to do. Um, consistent photos, that's a big help, you know, in terms of style and size. It just kind of, you know, that's maybe more of an aesthetic thing in some ways. So you can just be, you know, you don't have some images that have some kind of background, some that have a totally other, you know. The great thing is with uh, with Uber card and image cache, um, you can, you know, be cropping images to the same size. One little handy tip. Um, image cache module itself does not do this, but if you get the image cache actions module, you can actually set a canvas, a different canvas color behind that, because a lot of the time you maybe want to crop things to square thumbnails, so it's kind of a kind of a common request I find that you want to take something like that image on the on the right and actually turn it into a square with a white background. 